listening to the Hard Hat Podcast. Your host, Mason Smith. All right, yeehaw, motherfucker. Welcome to another episode of High Noon. We don't <laughs> we don't have my co-host today. It's just me. We're doing it solo. And uh, got a very special guest. I couldn't be more excited to have him on. Yonder. Hey, I'm that guy. What's up? Fuck yeah. What's up, buddy? That song reminds me of you. It's Hillbilly, but a little ratchet. Yeah. <laughs> I had that made. No kidding. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, hell yeah. Wait till you hear the outro. Oh, shit. (laughs) I got one of those, too. I'll be damned. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. So how you been, bud? I've been good, man. Uh, Fucking working a lot. Losing my mind a little bit. You know, Uh holding it together. That's about it. Uh, So for people that don't know, me and Yonder are door guys at uh, Vulcan Gas Company. Yep, that part's true. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've been working there together for like a year. We started like, what, like a week apart? same time, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I was actually thinking about this earlier. Uh, I met you at in, at one of those shitty daytime open mics yeah. at Creek. Yeah. In the back at, on at that when we were doing mics at yeah. the outdoor stage. When I first got here. Yeah, and uh, and you introduced yourself as Kelsey. Yeah. And I and then and then it didn't register with me that you're yonder. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, when I first got here, I was going by Kelsey because it. it I don't know. I, that that's what I went by in Myrtle that's, Beach. That's your Christian name. That's my name. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but one everybody started calling me Yonder because of my online stuff, and Red Band calls me Yonder. Oh, so you Tony. weren't you weren't you didn't do Yonder wasn't a thing back in Myrtle Beach. No, nobody called me Yonder there. Oh, okay. Only see. people online call me that. Like okay. it's my online persona. Right, because and then so you do uh, you do a lot of uh, VR stuff. Yeah, I did. Vir- I do the virtual reality with Red Band, but that's all. I do like it's not yeah. like a, I, I'm at home all the time on it. It's yeah, like, right. No, when yeah. He, when he goes live, I jump in there. Right, for an right. Hour or two. Right, and uh, you guys actually do like. Uh, you, there you go. Hey, you you, I didn't even have to tell him. He just knew. Good for you. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Fuck yeah, that's part of the pod is burping into the mic. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I can handle that. But hell yeah. Um, but you were saying that uh, you guys sometimes like do bits and shit, right? Don't you do kind of oh, yeah. like open mics a little yeah. bit in the VR? Yeah. What's that? So you're in there and you're looking, you see the other, yeah. and it's kind of, you're. it's like, oh it's shit. It's just like a regular, it's just like a regular open mic, except people laugh. Yep. And uh, yeah. everything's a cartoon. Right, right. That's crazy. And uh, yeah. is, is, is there one guy like on a stage or are you just in kind of like a... Like looking around and you're just looking at your buddies. Nah, man, there's a stage. Dude. Like oh, we have, yeah. there's comedy clubs in there. There's Side Splitters Comedy Club, the club from uh, Florida, uh, right? No, 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 no. Uh, Grand Theft Auto. Oh, I see. Somebody oh, the one that's on Sunset, that right? It's supposed to it be was, Sunset. It's supposed to be the comedy yeah. store or whatever, but it's like Side Splitters or whatever. The right, fuck. gotcha. I uh, remember that. Yeah, very cool. Uh, that's like. Uh, did you ever watch that movie, The Nice Guys? Uh uh-uh. Oh, very good movie. It's Ryan Gosling and. Uh, not Russell Crowe. Is it Russell Crowe? Uh, it's not so. Gerard Butler. It's Russell Crowe. Yeah. Russell Crowe is one of my favorite bird-named actors. Yeah, what's another bird-named actor? I forget. Birdman? Yeah. That's a rapper, though. Yeah. It's a movie, too. Birdman? He's oh, Michael a, Keaton. He's also what, a right? basketball player. Birdman's a basketball player? Oh, Larry Bird. Uh, well, uh, Larry Bird. Anderson. He played for, uh, what was his name? You don't. You're not going to. I don't know sports. Guys, yeah, are you played a sports guy? Played for the Heat with LeBron back in the day. White guy with tattoos and shit. Oh, oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah. He was, but he was kind of like uh, known for all the tattoos, right? Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. sucked he at was basketball. Known, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> you I don't know anything about sports. Yeah, they won a championship. Uh, and everybody knows this. You're a big fucking Alabama guy. I am a big Alabama guy. You remember when we told Colt to say "Roll Tide" and he thought you just said it to people that had sports jerseys on? Yeah, so, you, <laughs> we haven't told him that it's different. It, it's He's specific. It. Yeah, he just sees so. He, hey, sports, roll tide. Hey, it works. <laughs> it he, works. He'll see like a baseball jersey, roll tide. You know what's funny is like you'll get you'll get one back more often than you think. So whether or not just, they got whether or not they got, you know, they'll be like, hey, you know what, roll tide. Let's Fuck yeah. The, uh, the video just turned off. Uh oh. Technical difficulties. We'll keep recording this part. Cool. Yeah, good. Keep it you know going what, man? Here. You don't want them to see me anyhow, man. They'll turn this shit off. No. Everybody loves you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's kind of fucking annoying, man. Oh, yeah, because you have to be nice to everybody? 
I don't have to be, but it helps. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm nice to people until they uh, give me uh, lit because they got kicked out for something, mm. and then I have to just. And like, it's it's kind of a hard, it's kind of an annoying line too, as a door guy who is kind of like popular on Kill Tony. Yeah, because people will see you on Kill Tony, they're like, oh, I love when you're on Kill Tony, this and that, and then, but then on the other hand, you might have to tell them to to be quiet or kick oh, them out, yeah. and then they're like, well, wait a minute, I liked you on Kill Tony. It's like. Cool, man, but you still can't be loud during the show. Yeah, I. You know what? Uh, I liked me on Kill Tony too. Like, <laughs> I we have that in common. Now, now we don't really. We don't. I, I don't really work Kill Tony too much. Yeah, I ra- rarely do. We. Uh, it's not so much. You know how when we have shows, we, we're kind of like got to be real on on top of yeah, people. Yeah. Is it like that? No. Kill Tony seems more like wild. Like kind of let things go. You know, it is. That's per Tony's request. He's like, you know, don't we want kill Tony to be more like a party. It's not right. so much like a stand up show More like a hang and, you, and you're all a part of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's kind of a, like when when we watch or when Tony goes on, we've also been told to sort of let. Yeah. Let people. But dude. And then I'll tell you, you know, this happened to you and I the other night. We had uh, Willie Barcina. Oh, is, yeah. that, is that his name? Barcina? Willie Barcina. Barcina. Yeah. Uh, George Perez was his feature. Who, by the way, if you ever Murdered. if you ever see that George Perez is around, it's we're good. Uh, I mean, what a yeah. fucking crusher! It was just nonstop, fucking boom, boom. But uh, anyways, point being, when Willie was on, that drunk lady in the front row yeah. had already been almost kicked out like twice, yeah. and been warned multiple times, and finally is interrupting the shit out of the show. And we go to pull the trigger on kicking her out. And old dude fucking, can I save her? You know, don't don't kick her out. But then that opens the door for everyone else to start going, well, you can't tell me to be quiet if she's not being quiet. So then you got to, it kind of makes it hard for us, you know? Yeah, what we, we were starting to use that as like, uh, like some rooms are just like that. Exactly, some your, right. Some of your rooms are just like that people are going to talk a little more. Because the comedian is going to invite that. Well, it's mostly I've no, we've noticed it's it's the non-whites, <laughs> and that's just I mean I'm just saying. Welcome to High Noon, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, is that what you do when something uh, moderately racist happens? Well, the, <laughs> is that the? Uh, no, no, but that was the first one that was there, and then you know it's like. I understand that we we gotta like that the media is controlled, you know. Like, my people wandered through the desert for forty years for what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's funny? Uh, my soundboard's all fucking like mixed up and shit. But like, so that one's just called Jew music. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Roll tide. <laughs> Uh, oh, speaking of Alabama. That day on, if I was going somewhere. Damn right. Yeah. I was running. I heard he's the, the fucking the greatest, governor. greatest running back of Alabama's <laughs> history was fucking retarded. <laughs> Boy, he's stupid, but damn, he's fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great. Uh, just what the way he goes right there, where he's just like. Yeah. <laughs> was that gump? It sure as hell was. <laughs> But not what were we saying? What were we talking about? Uh, uh, oh, uh, how it's uh, oh, oh yeah. black rooms versus white rooms. Well, the, the, and, and I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Is like, dude, some of the comedians want their crowd to just talk with them. Right, right. Like Tony, they he want, likes it. Tony likes that. Tony likes it a lot. He wants it to be more interactive. And he also, obviously, like, that sets him up for a lot of really, you know, he likes doing the crowd work and shit. Well, that's where a lot of bits are from. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get a lot of bits that'll come out from doing the crowd work stuff or just talking. Right. Talking about shooting shit. Yeah. And you've you've had to go up uh, a bunch of times at the very end of Secret Show, which is a fucking dude tough. That's like kind of like the the worst spot to go up. I don't know, man. But you you like it though. You get to fuck around and like. Yeah, I like it because I don't really I don't really plan. Like I don't I don't like 
hash out my shit and like make sure all the words are perfect or whatever at, at, right that the mics right. and stuff like that so i just go up and talk <sighs> when i go up because i don't go up as much as everybody else right so i just i just talk when i go up there and if, it, if i talk myself <sighs> in, into bits like uh, then like then, yeah right right which is uh it's and you've I think you were on one didn't you do one of those the those crowd work shows that we all got I didn't do the crowd work show oh okay uh, that I was, did the door guy show and I was kind of like doing music and crowd work at the beginning right and right then right I just kind of switched into material right yeah um yeah that last that that's a tough spot I like watching uh, of course we all do but Rouse. J- Jason Rouse dude, go on at the end pro dude when it's it's you know what's funny is like even though some people are like. Oh my god! Like, what the fuck is this? No one. A lot of people still just stay around for it. They're like, "Well, I want to see where it's going." And it's so funny because he still they'll break. Like they'll they'll end up laughing. Yeah. Like he is. It's pretty cool to watch it, and he leans right. He leans so hard into it. He. I think he wants it. That I. I, I think he wants people to kind of walk. Yeah. Which some they do. Like it's funny. once he does the. Yeah. The 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 old paint. Yeah, the old paint can. Yeah, well, mixing paint, dude. Yeah. It's, it's like, and he does it for a while. <laughs> well, I believe that depending on how reluctant the crowd is, he does it for longer. Yeah, just to put it in there. Yeah, like yeah, he, just a. Fuck oh, you don't him. like that? I'm gonna yeah. keep doing it. Right. Uh, were you you were there the, uh, the other night when he went up last and uh, just he like went long because we didn't have anything going on after. Yeah. And he just and he kept like he would inch away from the mic and just kind of stare at people. And then he'd come back and be gross again. <laughs> ah, I love it. Yeah. it's Dude, what people don't know about Rouse is that he is like an international juggernaut. He's like a 20-year... Con- he's like over 20 years, I think. Yeah, dude. Like, he crushes in Europe. Right, right. He's Canadian. All the time. Yeah. he And not a lot of people know that he is the Harriet Tubman of Canadian comedians. By what do you mean? I mean that he has an underground railroad of Canadian comics that he is ushering into mm. America from oppression in Canada. What, like, because they... Comedic oppression. They, is Canada still weird about live comedy? I don't know that they are so much anymore, but they definitely were because uh, my buddy Sam Walker and Uncle Hack and Brett Forte that do the Danger Cats thing. I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. those guys. They were. They, are they Canadian too? Yeah. Rouse brought... Uh, brought them down as well and they were here for a hot minute but they were like you know oh i remember talking about how the 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 people weren't allowing them to do their comedy like Mm. the way that they the way that it should be allowed right and what what, where where are they at in in canada ontario Uh, or something i forget honestly yeah but um a lot of I mean, uh, what Norm? Wait, Norm? No, Norm's not Canadian. Norm's Canadian. Is he Canadian? He is Canadian. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, uh, my one of my favorite Harlan Williams, Harlan Canada Williams guy, and then Canadian. Tom Green, obviously, fucking started there. But Jim I guess Carey. they all left. So I guess it makes sense. Yeah, uh, all the <laughs> <laughs> there's not a whole lot of Canadian uh, Jordan Peterson. Not a whole lot of Canadian comedians that stay up there. I wait, think. is Jordan Peterson a comic now? I mean, not Jordan Peterson, Russell Peters. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Russell Peters, not Jordan Peterson. Oh, also, he's a DJ now too. Russell Peters. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Jordan. He likes Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Uh, my buddy you Andrew. Should start every day by cleaning your room. <laughs> Dude, my buddy Andrew Vickers that I started this podcast with uh, does these like videos on or reels or what they, they do sketches where he does a Jordan Peterson impression, uh-huh. and it's like it's like I did it's so good. If you have a dirty mind or problems in your mental health, you should start by cleaning your room. The messes start at home, and then they carry themselves all the way through your lives. <laughs> that's good, right? I yeah. don't really know him. <laughs> But I know that that's the impression my buddy does. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, so anyway, so uh, we kind of skimmed over, glo- glossed over uh, where where you uh, were at before you moved here. So you were in South Carolina, North South Carolina. Yes, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I was born and raised in a town called Bennettsville, South Carolina. Aziz Ansari is also from there. Oh no shit. Um, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I spent 18 years there, 18, 19, I think 18 or 19 years there, and I moved to Myrtle Beach. Uh, to do music? 
right? Yeah, well, not really. I kind of, I mean, I was already doing music at that time. Like, I played in church bands. Right, and right, and right. And stuff like But it was predominantly church bands and right. stuff. I never really played in, like, secular venues or whatever. Now, point. when you were doing the, the church music and stuff, were you still listening to, like, the music that we listened to, like, like rock and roll and shit. Were you still listening to all that? Yeah, I, I mean, I listened to Christian music obviously because that's what I had to play. Yeah, and your dad was a preacher, right? Sort of. It's not like he's a every Sunday behind the pulpit preacher, but he does like a men's club meeting, like sermons Bible study and, and stuff, stuff like, like that. that. Like, I guess he would be a deacon, right? That's what I was just trying like to think that. of what and that's called. Yeah, I guess that. But I mean. He does go around and does like uh, singings and stuff, and he'll like talk to the, you know, do sermons and. So he he also plays. Like He's a musician too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when did you get your first guitar? Oh man, at birth. Yeah. Uh, fuck yeah. You know, I, I started getting into it though. Like I always had instruments laying around the house because my everybody, my granddad, my dad, played. So. uh uh, and I, my grandparents raised me, so I was mm. uh, I was in my grandparents' house. My granddad was the actual musician. He was like the uh, he was the killer dude. He gotcha. He played on like uh, this variety TV show back in the day called the Jim Nesbitt Show. Oh no shit! So he was like the band leader on that show, piano player. Oh, like a regular on there. Yeah, he was the band leader. Oh, he was fuck like yeah. the, the uh, what you what you, what's the guy's name that was on Letterman? He's like Questlove. Okay. On, like he's the band leader. Gotcha. But he was a piano player and he got to play with all the country guys. It was a country variety show that play, aired in the mornings. Yeah. And it was locally broadcast out of Florence, South Carolina. Huh. So like he would get to play with like uh Roger Miller and uh uh, Marty Robbins. And oh, sick! Uh, I don't know. Like that. Do you see to the in there? You see the Marty Robbins poster? No, Do, but I trust in that, that it's hallway. There. Yeah. <laughs> I try. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out in the West Texas town, town of El Paso. Marty Robbins told my granddad that my granddad was the greatest harmonizer he had ever sang with. I mean, that, that I, that's rude. Calling him a harmonizer. That's fucking. Well, no, nah, that's no. actually like that's. A, I was trying to make it sound like it was like a racial thing. Yeah, well, these fucking harmonizers over here. Yeah, these <laughs> these harmons. <laughs> you know those harmons that just moved in down the road. Yeah, well, making this the place neighbor is crawling with harmons. <laughs> yeah. uh, Harmon Williams. Yeah, Harmon. Yeah, Harmon something. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, he told he told him he was a, like a harmonizer, like just, uh, people that can sing with other singers, like mm-hmm. a melody singer is, sings the regular melody, but then a harmonizer just can pick whatever they want to do as long as it sounds good, and it's not the same thing as the melody, and sing a harmony line. And my granddad would always tell everybody, y'all pick your harmony lines, and I'll take what's left. Oh, okay. So he didn't give a shit, dude. He could right. sing any part. That's I mean, you're that's and that's how you are. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. like just earlier when we were doing sound check, uh, I played fucking. Wait, let me see where it's at. Here we go. And you just played guitar to it. Yeah. <laughs> Which that's was, how I learned, man. I would, yeah. I would hold my guitar and, and, and I like, there was a point where I was just, I had already learned all my chords. Mm-hmm. You know, I could pick a couple of songs out or whatever, but then I got bored. With that, because I was like, "This is this all it is? It's yeah. kind of boring. Like, I can do that. I can do that. This is boring. So I would just literally uh, hold my guitar all the time, and, they, and like, on TV, the commercials would come on. And, and you just 30-second commercial, so you got 30 seconds to figure out what they're doing. That's pretty cool. And play with it. Yeah. So it just got, it came to a minute where I, like, got to a point where I would just. Next thing you know, you're playing, oh, 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 O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> It was long, long before that was a commercial, but uh, that's been around a while too. Yeah, it has. But uh, but yeah, man, that's how that was sort of how I learned how to improvise on, right. on guitar. Right, right, very cool. And uh, uh, and and you uh, you like to play more like when you're doing your shows, you like to do more solo shows too, which uh, yeah. I love. One of my favorite songs that you play, is your War Pigs. Yeah, a cover is so fucking good. Thanks, man. And, and the Ariel's one, that one's any of the ones where you're like, how is he? 
You're going to play War Pigs on your fucking, on an acoustic guitar, and then it crushes. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, the one you've been doing this one lately, the CeeLo Green song. Yeah, crazy. The, yeah. It, I don't know if that one's new for you or if you've had that for a while, but oh, yeah. that one fucking, th- that's the one you put up. Uh... Is that mine? Oh, it is mine. It ain't mine. But yeah, um, the crazy cover that you have, that's fucking, yeah. I love that one. I've oh, I know what I was saying. Years. You did that um, at the comedy store. You got to. Yeah, dude. That was very cool. I saw the clip. Yeah. Uh, was it pretty wild getting to go to the comedy store? And what's the green room like there? Dude, I, I, it's I like, hear, it, everything is shiny. Yeah? Yeah. Like the color of things or just. Like the couch is, is like this shiny vinyl material, the, uh, the. Bar is marble because there's a there they have a private like, bar the right glass table is like like everything in the room is shiny that's cool fuck yeah just like, like so it, it, but the, but the hang is sweet like yeah. I was chilling in there and all of a sudden like it's Jeremiah Watkins and Tiffany Haddish and Tony oh that's Woods so cool and George Perez. Um, now, did everybody, everybody on the show that came from Austin, they all, everyone got to be in the green room, yeah. right? That's it was sick. our green room. Yeah, that's sick. I, I just didn't room. know everybody if like, I thought there might've been like too many people or something like that. No, nah, I, it, it, it sort of reminds me of some, some secret shows here where the green room got a little crowded, but dude, it was like, I mean, you walk out of the green room and there's a curtain here and beyond that curtain is the comedy store logo and the red curtain to walk out on the main room stage. And you're just walking back here and listening to your friends on stage right on the other side of the curtain thinking, holy shit, this is where it's it went the, down. Right, right. This is where it went down right here, dude. So like, crazy. How many nights... We're like Joey Diaz and Segura and all just chilling back. Richard Bill Pryor, Bill, Bill Burr, Burr, all of those guys just standing here where I'm standing. Right, that's like, so sick. And then I'll like, uh, I'll be like looking in, like down the hallway or whatever, and notice pictures on Instagram of like my heroes that are like standing in this spot where right. I'm standing. Right. Uh, that's it, ridiculous. So how? So in that green room. So you were saying you go out to the the main room stage, which mm-hmm. is the big red one where they used to do Kill Tony. Yeah. Can you get to the original room from the same green room, or do you have to go somewhere else? I've never been. Nah. So like, uh, the original room is is like next. Like the original room is 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 the front of the building. Okay. So, like, when you see the the pictures of the comedy store, there's a big glass window. Yeah. That glass window is the original room. Okay. So, that's where all that shit goes down. And you can see the comic from the edge of the window, but if you're looking straight in it, you're just, you can't tell that it's it's more than a window. Okay. Looks like just merch. And then belly room's, like, upstairs. Belly room is, yeah, around the back of the building upstairs. But, like, uh, the main room... Green room is directly behind the main room stage. Okay, gotcha. So you have to go either up the up the stage and behind the curtain to get to it, or around and then back behind this long hallway that goes behind, like from the outside door. Saw Nikki Glazer just come out of that door and just get into an Uber. Yeah, fuck so yeah. Was, and then just a few minutes later, I was just hanging out back behind the curtain. And I was like, where does this door go to? And I just opened it up and I looked and it was just fucking sunset. And I was like, oh, so this is where all the talent just comes out. Oh, right. You found like the, uh, the back door or whatever. Yeah. Okay. There's like a holy, there's like a, a, they call it the sacred grounds where everybody goes and smokes weed. Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Jeff Scott, the piano player for years. Did you smoke weed there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. (laughs) And should we smoke Mike Tyson weed back there? Dude, Dude, Mike Tyson weed is so good. That's all I smoked when I was in Vegas. Uh, I bought a two gram blunt. Yeah. That comes with like this, uh, it comes with, it came with a glass mouthpiece in the blunt. Yeah. Which was, I thought was genius. But, uh, so it's a two gram blunt. It's like that long, but it's like that. It's like a cigar. Yeah. And I say, I brought it back with me and it came in a glass tube. So this, it's really so fucking cool. Yeah. And I smoked it by myself on the back deck. And the next day I had chest pains. <laughs> like, cause I, it, it took me about an hour to smoke yeah. it. And I smoked it alone. At, at Skankfest, Red Band was like, uh, will you grab me some 
pre rolls when you go to the dispensary, and I was like, "Where'd you go? Which do you remember what dispensary? I went to MedMen. I went. We were gonna go there, but uh, we ended up going to New Woo and Canna Stars because it was okay, right right it there, was walking oh, distance from y'all were in the old, old part days. of it. See, when I went, I only just barely. I went there for about an hour and walked up and down that thing with the lights. Fremont, yeah, Fremont. That's right. Yeah. And uh, but we didn't hang out. Like I was on the strip for yeah. pretty much my whole trip, and I wish I would have spent more time at Fremont. That seemed fun. Yeah, that looked, y'all never even really left Fremont, right? I never went to. I've never been to the Strip, dude. The Strip, Still. dude. Everything you see, th- so you you never get to be on the street in in Vegas, in the Strip. So it's all these sidewalks, and you got to go across these footbridges to get to the other side. Like, dude, it, it there is an ungodly amount of walking if you're down if you're in, oh, yeah. if you're near the Strip. You would see something and go, oh, it's right there, but you have to walk. Have you been? Uh, no. Dude, you have to, it's like, oh, it's right there. Oh, it takes like an hour to walk there. It's yeah. insane. Fremont was sweet, though. Yeah, there was a lot of cool. walking with that. Oh, here, you want to smoke this joint? Why know. not? I don't know why I didn't spark that up yet. But go, uh, go ahead, though. But no, nah, uh, I got, we got, uh, I got him some of the Tyson pre-rolls, and yep. I got some of the Tyson edibles, and the Tyson edibles are an ear with a bite taken out. Oh, so I just heard uh I just heard about that. I on got the one left. I got one left that I brought back with me. It's only 10 milligrams. But, uh-huh. I, but dude, 10 milligrams. What a funny fucking thing. 10 I, milligrams from a fucking dispensary. It's is a real 50 milligrams. Real elsewhere. 10 real 10 milligrams from uh, actually regulated is yeah. different than like a guy who made a brownie and says it's 50 milligrams yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that 10 milligram edible hits me harder than some like oh yeah, like, this yeah, is fu- this is a hundred milligram, and this is a hundred milligram, or, or even a pack of those like stoner patch gummies or whatever they're called. Right, yeah, those suck. Five hundred milligrams, I'm like suck my dick, dude. Like, right. I don't even get cotton mouth from them. Uh, well, which by the way, uh, this is not my sponsor of the podcast. That kitchen, follow them on Instagram. Their edibles are fucking real nice. Hell yeah, I- I'll fucking I'll get you some. Well, nice, and I'll see what you think about it, and then we can do a review about it. Hell yeah, because. They're, they've been the, as far as like edibles that you can get like easily. They've they dude one of them, so it's split into ten pieces. So each piece is fifty milligrams. Yeah, and I have to cut that in half. Damn, it fucks me up, ruins my day. Just I mean my day's over. I can't do fucking edibles. Yeah, I I don't do a whole lot of edibles. I just prefer to, but I do gravity bongs. So like that's. The old GB. Yeah, the old GB. So How are you, what's your method? What's your gravity bong method? I have a uh, half gallon pitcher um, in a two liter bottle. They just fits okay. So that's a big. It. That's a big one. And what are you? Are you doing that in the bathtub or the sink or whatever? No, it's just a half gallon pitcher, like with a handle, and it's full of water. Oh, and I see. The and then the two. Okay, okay. So it's like a portable. So what? So when I was growing up, RGBs where you'd get the, you know, the big Gatorade bottle, the fat chode one. Yeah. You'd yeah. you'd melt a hole in the bottom of that, and then you'd melt a hole Waterfall. in the lid. Yeah, and you would let, and it would pull itself, and then you take the lid off. But the lid was always you always had to waste an eight millimeter socket. Yeah, you I get always a, had to steal someone's eight millimeter socket. I get the smallest one that I can. I get the smallest socket that I can get because really. The you want to pack it into the side that the socket goes into, and you want it to be the smallest socket size. So if you get like a four and a half millimeter that easily fits into a cap after you just bore it out a little bit, right? Like a good cap makes all the difference. Yeah, totally. Have you ever done the? Uh, of course, I know you probably have, but uh, did you ever remember when you're younger and you fill the bathtub and then you get the big fucking like uh, a, yeah, a that a, thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Dude, that shit. But it's dumb. It's dumb. It's yeah, it's dumb. stupid. It's like, it, see, I'm a, I'm a conservative smoker to where I, I, I don't want the, uh, I don't want to have, I don't want to waste weed. Yeah. Yeah. You right. know, the only time right. I waste weed is when I roll joints for everybody. And that's, smoke. yeah, which is what we do. Like, it's the pre-shift thing. Yeah. Right. So, like, 
So you're not smoking those at home? No. Oh, okay. Never. So that's just a, a purely if there's friends or like, you know, got people yeah. around. Oh, okay. I don't I don't just I, roll joints to smoke for myself. I had it in my head that you sat and just smoked those fat fucking things at home. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. You look so offended. No. God, no. No. The only time I roll is like, and honestly, the only reason I do it is because of one, I'm really good at it. And two, yeah. uh, I, I want to keep that, I want to keep that like ability so <laughs> yeah and you do the mouthpieces too yeah <laughs> which but, is uh, always nice the, uh, I've been told recently Genevieve actually said this to me she said oh who, whose joint is that oh that must be one of Mason's grandpa joints oh yeah you do roll grandpa joints <laughs> weed all the way to the end yeah <laughs> grandpa joints that fucking tickled me uh but yeah, uh, I don't know. I like rolling. I like rolling joints. Yeah, I got it's fun. Ounce. It's a fun thing. I got an ounce of really good weed one time, and I had like a, I don't know what it was. I ended up having some time off, and I was like, "Fuck it, dude!" I got an ounce of weed. I got a, a pack of papers that had, and it just so happened to be the ones that I use all the time. The OCBs that have the little terrible filters that you can make your own filter. And OCBs are like a, a more of a cheaper one too, right? Yeah, I think so. But I do like, raws. But I, I started rolling them. I started rolling with those. And I was like, dude, by the end of this ounce, I'm going to know how to roll a, a joint. Oh, with yeah, a yeah, filter. yeah. Right. And I did. Like I, I rolled up some of the best weed I've ever had. I just rolled into a bunch of joints. Yeah, I remember uh, I learned how to roll joints when uh, I went and lived on a weed farm for a month during harvest yeah. out in Oregon. Lived in a camper and everything. It was awesome. And I lost my bowl <coughs> on the first day. That'll do it. And so I go I go to my buddy that got me the job, and I go, hey, uh, I, I want to fucking, can you roll me a joint? And he laughed at me. He goes, look around. He's, and he tossed some nugs on the table, pack of papers and a grinder, and said, figure it out. Here on a weed farm. Yeah. And I did. I just sat there and like tried and tried and tried and finally just got it once. Yeah. Once you get it the first time, you got it. Yeah. And, and I've noticed that like it's, it's hard for me to do anything differently than I did when I first figured the, it out. Like You kind of do. do you keep that one technique that you figure so out. He's like, this works. I'm just going to keep doing this. That's part of the reason why I roll the grandpa joints. Hey, you gotta do it. Go with what works, man. And like, see, the, this is this one's the one thing I've had to adjust is uh, the tightness of it. Yeah, I, I've had to really work on that because I've had some where it's filled with good weed, but I grind it up it's and it's sticky. like too fluffy and sticky, which is a funny problem to have. It's like, oh, my weed's too good to have yeah. in a joint, but <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I'll stick to with my grandpa joints. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, do you smoke out of any, uh, any, besides the gravity bong? Do you have like, do you have like any like pieces? I've do got, you do dabs? No, I don't I'm not do a dabs. fan. I think that you're crossing do into dabs. a different threshold. Here's my thing about dabs. It's too much work to fucking get to do it. It's too much like drugs. It's like you're doing real drugs. Yeah. I remember, uh, my mom stayed with me, uh, years ago and I had, it was when I was still trying. I was like, I had, cause I have a dab rig. But it's just a lot of fucking work. Yeah. You gotta gotta have the propane and all that bullshit. But she saw me doing it and was like, What is that? I'm like, Oh, it's still just weed, but it looks bad. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Like I'm a traditionalist. I enjoy flour. So do I. Like I like the process of like smelling the yeah, flour and right. seeing it breaking it up, grinding it and up. I don't need to puke. Like I don't I don't need to hit a fucking dab and throw up. Like well, I, I just don't need to need that in my life. Well, the the dabbers will be <laughs> yeah. like the dab people. Yeah. will be like, uh, oh man, but you know this gets rid of all the other stuff that you don't want that hurts your lungs and everything. Oh and yeah, like, and then that's why you're coughing the, for a half this hour. This is just the uh, you know concentrated version of that. And I'm, I get it. Like I understand why you're doing it, but like we have different goals in this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I not, also, I love the taste of weed. Yeah. Like, I love the act of, like, smoking a joint, you know? Do you do dabs? Uh, I used to. 
but, but they see, be, they may be really anxious. See, I they feel like it's a it's a used to thing. Like I I da- hey I dabbled. Don't, don't entertain him. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I did though, and uh, I had my fun with it. And now I don't need to do it. Uh, I also went through a stint of those, the the dab pins, but where you put your own uh, oh yeah. shatter, and it just has the coil. Yeah, but it was such a mess. Like they were so messy. Those things are cool. Like the pins, I like the cartridges. I like for like just being in public. Yeah, because it's easy. It's just boom. Easy. Yeah, yeah. And especially the live resin ones. Oh my god, those are very nice. Those are those are super those are worth nice. worth smoking. Uh, but yeah, I don't like the. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. When I'm at home, it's all it's all gravity bongs. I'm good right now. Uh, uh, yeah, the GBs. Uh, I had a buddy. Uh, when I was when I was a teenager that would uh fuck come on that would uh he would make a gram of just like dank he would buy like a nug yeah. you know like a twenty thirty dollar gram yeah. uh and would just do GBs yeah and would like make a gram last like two weeks that's how you do it yeah <laughs> that's getting high on a budget here we go hey they don't call it a bud jit for nothing no kidding but see this is what I'll do. He gives me nothing. No kidding. <laughs> Cause you get enough of this at work. You know? No kidding. Uh, no. Uh, no, but seriously, like I'm gonna get like an ounce of weed. Yeah, that's gonna last me a month. Uh, yeah, cause you're doing the GBs and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna last me a literal month, and it lasts me a little bit longer if I don't rob from it to add to my joint kit. Mm, right. I usually just keep just enough to roll like a pinner or two in and smoke, there. maybe smoke it on the way to work. No, I, I don't really smoke in the truck. You know what? You know what? That's something that's faded too from the adult world is smoking like in the vehicle. I don't, I don't yeah. do that either just cause it's Texas and like the, it's that smell, you know, like I feel like cause dude, I'll, I'll like smell someone driving around in town. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, they're smoking a I joint. Mean, I remember blunt rides. Yeah, but see, yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. Like when you like I remember doing that too. It used to we would literally roll a blunt and go, "Now let's go get in the car and drive around and smoke it." Yeah. Like that was what you're doing, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, also it used to be a thing you'd fucking you'd get hammered and you go, "Who wants to go drunk driving?" Woo! Now it's like, "No, I need to get home." Right, <laughs> dude. Being a grown up kind of sucks, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you gotta pay for stuff. But uh, man, speaking of paying for stuff, dude, I I paid for that lot behind Vulcan the other day and uh-huh, left, yeah. like not long after my shit ended, and they still sent a bill for like eighty something dollars. Oh, eighty! Wait, wait, wait! Did you get a ticket? Or, no, or you- I actually paid to park in the lot. And it charged you eighty dollars for the parking. Well, no, I paid thirty dollars to park there for three hours, which is insane. Which is fucking insane. Yeah, for three hours to park there, and I paid it. I have the receipt. And then they sent but you. I because I pulled out after my time ended. They sent me a bill for eighty something dollars. They didn't even send it to me. They sent it to my stepmom because the truck I'm driving is in my stepmom's name. Oh, okay. I got it's you. still registered to them from when they gave it to me after I totaled my car on a deer. Yeah. Oh, out in, in South Carolina or here? No, dude. I was not. I had, I was thirty minutes out from my house. I had just put my key under my mat for that my fucking... landlord to drive here to live to move here. And I hit a deer. <laughs> I'm fucking leaving. <laughs> Did you like that? Yeah, no, that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but not. Nah, that's fucked fucking, up. That's it was fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah, like, that's like wild. 30 minutes after I left yeah. my house. Like, and, and, and you can look on the map. I lived in Merle's Inlet. I hit a deer in Conway. Uh where Coastal Carolina University is. Mm-hmm. So, and did that that uh, postponed your moving here, I'm assuming? Nope. Are you still left I, the dude, same day? I, well, I had packed up my shit. My shit oh, was yeah, in my car. Oh, yeah, you were ready to go. Yeah. My fuck. shit was in my car. Like, my dad had left his work trailer. He cleaned out his work trailer, brought it down to my apartment. I loaded up all my shit into his trailer. 
he came and picked up that and picked up the trailer with his truck, took it back to Bennettsville, and I was going to put everything else I could get in my car in my car. What was the car again? That you were the a one Ford that Fusion. Oh, okay. That's like the that's like a sedan. Yeah. So. Did the deer I die? It, I, I don't know, but it fucked my car up. Yeah, but I, I was half like I don't know. I got out and uh, I looked at it like the whole hood was caved in, like my fender was in, on the tire. Yeah, right, right. So Fuck. I was like, you know what, man? I'm only about an hour away from where I need to be. Mm-hmm. So I got out and I snatched the fucking fender off of the tire. Threw it in the ditch. <laughs> no, I just, it was still attached. I just like yanked on it until I pulled the metal away from the wheel. So yeah. as long as I stayed straight and didn't like move the. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, as long it, as it, I didn't make any turns. As long as, yeah, as long as I stayed kind of straight, it wouldn't rub. And I was like, fuck it. Even if it does, like. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, right. Whatever. You're just trying to get what I, you it's need It's already to be, fucked. Right. Yeah, right. It's already fucked, so I'm just like, if I get to Bennettsville. Now, and then is that, they gave you the truck that you're in now, right? Yeah, we loaded everything that was in my car into his truck, and then we rode together to Alabama. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. So we spent, like, spent the night at the lake in Alabama, and that's the lake truck. Okay. So gotcha. that was, like, his, his truck that was in Alabama, so that he would have, like... A lake truck. Right. Something to take the trash out of it, whatever the fuck. But anyway, that's what I ended up driving. I gotcha. <laughs> All right. Hey, so. Hey, so. You want to play some tunes? Sure. Fuck yeah. All right. Yonder is going to play some fucking play a song for us. Getting Which a private one? private concert. Do you want to do one? You want? I figured uh, since it's YouTube, we probably got to do one of your owns. Yeah. Or does that how you would say that? One of your owns. It'd be one of your own. Yeah. Well, I guess it would have to come with a story, right? Yeah, I was. Ho- that's so, what I was hoping uh, for. I quit drinking uh, on February 29th, which is Leap Day. 2016 and when you quit drinking I don't know if you've ever done anything like this for long term but when you quit drinking your mind kind of goes to a weird spot you're bored well you're (laughs) bored but you're also depressed (laughs) yeah so uh, you want to kill yourself uh, and you have all of this angry like energy in you Mm mm-hmm and you're not putting it anywhere because, you know... Because you'd rather have a drink. Because you'd rather have a drink. But anyway, I st- I didn't. I withheld. Did you but, eat a lot of candy? Yeah, a lot of candy. Because yeah. your, your sugar intake is down. I just figured of, that out. Because you're, there's a lot of alcohol and sugar, and you forget how much. Mm-hmm. But anyway, some for some reason, my mind ended up in on a farm in Oklahoma somewhere around turn of the century 1800s 1900s and I don't know why but that's where it ended up and I put myself so far into that character I couldn't get out Mm -hmm. and this is the story of where I ended up too dark Well I swear that if I see them in their graves they'll both lay But they're hiding up in Kansas where no one knows their names Well it's to my horses Grandpa saddle he left to me in a jar of folded money buried neath that big old tree. We'll track them around tall 
Tulsa where they hopped a northbound train And I swear still if I find them I'll make them feel my pain stack of Bibles tall as me, I swear I'll get my prize. On the banks of Old Red River, under cottonwood I pine, digging me a hole, but it ain't mine. Now my word could be fulfilled So I drove on up to Kansas In the pouring fucking rain Didn't leave there till I found them Now they're buried with my shame Come hell or high water Good Lord willing the creek don't rise On a stack of bibles tall me, I swear I'll get my prize on the banks of Old Red River under Cottonwood I pine digging me a hole but it ain't mine digging me a hole but it ain't mine filling up this hole and it ain't mine That was fucking good as shit. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. That's a cool fucking song. It didn't happen. <laughs> Still very cool. It happened to somebody and they didn't get to talk about it. And they, uh-huh. I, I, I believe in like, uh, you've done psychedelics before, mm-hmm. so you know there's something else. Right. You know? Yeah. I believe that sometimes those emotions will get trapped somewhere and they don't have they don't get to release and somebody somewhere 150 years later or whatever or however long will find that you know like yeah. it'll just it'll just you have to grab it while it's there it's gone forever kind of thing yeah right right and that's what that song was that's awesome that's fucking really cool hell yeah do you have more where you did them as the as the like the the character? Or, yeah, yeah. There's a different. There's a that's the first part of a story that 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 was part of a thing that I'm. It's a western that I've been writing called the Ballad of the Unlucky Man. And there's like yeah, there's a part to. Uh, is this is that recorded on the? Because uh, you're on you got albums yeah. on Spotify. Is that yeah. on one, the one with the green? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, what would everyone could find that at? Uh, it would be on Spotify. But Kelsey Hud- Hudgens. Kelsey Hudgens. H u d g i n s. Very cool. On and that's Spotify. on Spotify right now. Yeah. That's fucking sweet. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude! How many albums do you have on Spotify? Like two, technically, I think. But there's a lot of singles. Okay. 
There's Very a lot of cool. singles. Where'd you, as did well. you record those on your own? Yeah, there's there's some recordings that are like super old that I did from like 2006, 2005 to 2006 to like 2010 uh-huh. that I recorded with a guy named Fred Shaw in Florence. He's like huge in the beach music scene. Mm-hmm. He's got like Cami Awards all over his studio walls. And well shit. is beach music like um like uh the what's it, Kenny Chesney? Is that like No, like like actual beach music. What's, like uh like you... um like the Drifters. Oh like and Yacht Rock. Is that the same? No, nah, like uh like this is from like ah uh, man from like the 60s the 50s and 60s like uh, okay can you play can you do like a, a quick like just uh what would beach an example of what beach music would be oh man like uh like the electric boogie woogie type thing which would be you like, can see it it's electric <laughs> like i'm not i'm not kidding I don't, like, I don't know that one i don't think i recognize that yeah you do you do know i how does it go it's like shag music man Shagging music. Hell yeah. That's the state dance of the South Carolinas. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Um, very cool. Uh, would you want to do Would you want to do another one? Sure. That was fucking cool as shit, huh? Yeah. Right? And it sounds good, too. Nothing I, like a good murder ballad, right? Yeah, I love it. That's what You like Coulter Wall? Yeah. He, his Kate McCannon song? So. So good. It was funny. I just listened to that today. Yeah, see... I, I kind of like some people have said, man, that sounds a lot like Coulter Wall. And I was like, hey, I had it first. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's uh, only like 23. Yeah. He's young. You know, I just found this out. Uh, I was doing IDs outside Vulcan the other day and I saw Saskatchewan and I was like, oh, uh, do you know Coulter Wall? And they said that his dad was like the governor there or whatever their version of that is, you know, the Canadian, whatever. Yeah. And apparently he was a big deal up there in the politics. You can't hide money. <laughs> oh, you what? You think you could tell that from Coulter? No, he's a fantastic songwriter and mm-hmm. his voice is, it's wild. It's nuts. It's crazy that that comes out of that little, and he's a little yeah. guy too. Yeah. And just, he's young as fuck. Doesn't look like, you know, Coulter like, Wall? No. He's fucking awesome. He's like, a, he sounds like an old country western well, singer. Oh, Raven is a wicked bird. <laughs> Dude, even his is like sounds deeper still. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I've, I'm a big fan. You like Sturgill too, and I we, like Sturgill. Yeah. I like those songwriters that are like the the new Willie Whalen and the Boys. Mm-hmm. Like that's what they are, pretty much. Jason Isbell, I know you like, I'm a which I love. Isbell. Jason Isbell, songwriter. He's a, he's a songwriter. Songwriter. Quit being political. Exactly though. That's what I mean, man. But I don't follow him on the internet. Uh huh. Because just, yeah, and I remember we talked about that. Yeah, right. I, I hear. Yeah, I hear when he. I don't follow out, him either. But uh, when he drops a new album. I'll check that out. Yeah. Right. Right. When I, when it's not an interview. Right. Yeah. Sorry, dude. <laughs> so how about part two of the story? Okay. So. Obviously, in the first story. The wife and the fella with whom she was cheating both got found. So they were obviously up in Kansas. And say the fella that she was cheating with was somewhat of a big deal and an important figure, or his dad was, kind of like Coulter Wall that we're just talking about, ironically enough. So anyway, the dad is now looking for the son. And he's come down to the last place where he heard his son to be before they went back to Kansas. Anyway. Hotter than I remember and dry than every year before. I've buried what I hope don't grow in the whole damn world's at war. They're liable to come and knock in any day now they do. Said a man came round, was asking some things that might lead back to you. Said I'd be damned if I go easy. Ain't no man gonna take my pride. 
I just as soon dig one more hole and down there by your side. I give them one good reason and not go messing in my ground. Best mind his own damn business as he suspects I don't fuck around. And lay me down my wretched soul, one day I'll walk your streets of gold. Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins, hope pearly gates will let me in. Said a man showed up last Tuesday in a brand new Model T. Said his boy went missing, was wondering if he'd been seen. The picture looked familiar to many folks here in this town. See, he was always with that farm girl. See him and her, they were running round. And lay me down my wretched soul. One day I'll walk your streets of gold. Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. Hope pearly gates will let me in. When he pulled up, I was waiting in the trees there off the side. I saw him holding something, but wouldn't have mattered if he tried. I laid him down real easy, laying there right by the side of the boy that he was after. Those who seek, so shall they find. Now lay me down, my wretched soul. One day I'll walk your streets of gold. Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. Hope pearly gates will let me in. Lay me down my wretched soul One day I'll walk your streets of gold Forgive me Lord for all my sins Hope pearly gates will take me in Fuck yeah Man that's awesome Dude my mom is gonna love this episode <laughs> She watches every episode Aww. She's gonna so love mom. that Yeah it's, it's a hi Janice That's great Hi Janice Man Fucking cool as shit Yeah that's what it's like. That's what it's like. Yeah. Um, I really, I was thinking too about what you were just saying about how like something might have happened to somebody 150 years ago. Yeah. And like, that's fucking, that's, yeah, I do agree with that. That's fucking for sure. That's very cool. Yeah. Have you done psychedelics too or no? Oh yeah. Okay. Cause I know, I know you've been, you've been sober for like seven years now. Yeah. Coming up on seven, but I, you don't, I've, you wouldn't do mushrooms now, would you? Or uh, you would, I haven't. So I don't know. Like I would do some psychedelic. I would take acid mm-hmm. like every, every year or so. Yeah. Once a year. That's every about where I'm years. at. I'm about once a year on acid and it's fun, but like I haven't in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I might. I I have to be. I'm an addict. Right. Like, put that out there. I have to be careful what I indulge myself in mm-hmm. because I'll get carried away too fast. But except for with the exception of like weed. But even then, you got to well, even with weed. Like, you got to reel I, it in a little bit. I I smoke nonstop when I can. Right. Like when I'm at home, like it's gravity bong after gravity bong after gravity bong. Like I'll have to like grind up weed three times in a uh-huh. night sometimes. Right. Just like I smoke a lot. Okay. So I, I have no control over the over my vices. At right, all. right, right. At all. Right. Dude, I I, uh, I I don't I didn't really drink soft drinks and I've I I, I, I haven't again, but a couple of weeks ago for sober October, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I always abstain from everything, so I'm gonna have soft drinks this month. And now, did you not smoke during sober October either? No, I did. Oh, okay. I was about to say, yeah. I was. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that no, I could have. Uh, dude, I'm always. It's sober. So, so the weed is always. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Weeds. Weeds are constant. And which, by the way, that's like the better. Like. Yeah. You know, like I was saying the other day, if I ever get to a point where a doctor's like, "You got to quit drinking," be like, "All right, I'll just quit drinking now, I guess." It's easy. But I'm still gonna smoke weed. Yeah. Hey, I did sober October. I didn't have one fucking drink. What are you laughing at? Nothing. I'm just thinking of what Sapegli would say. Oh. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like I uh, I could never. I'm gonna smoke weed forever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am too. Like I just <laughs> yeah. until my lungs can't. Yeah, you know, right. Or, and then like, it's edibles. And then it's edibles and or or vape 
something like a like some sort of something. vapor that right better. Uh, oh, this is what I was trying to ask you if you had done when you were young. Remember when the bag got popular? Oh, uh, the bread the, bag, the gravity bag, or the uh, volcano. It, it was the oh, big. Oh yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a huge bag that you would oh, fill, yeah. and then you just pass it around. But I always thought it was stupid. Just like. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's just it's like, dude, wait, that's wait like, a minute. Uh, you hand me this fucking balloon? Yeah, like, right. <laughs> like, dude, if I'm going to huff a balloon. you know how much smaller a joint is than yeah. this? If I'm going to huff a balloon, it's got to have nitrous in it. Oh, yeah. I've fucked around with the nitrous. I've been to a festival or two. Yeah, you ever see? Uh, so, back at, so, when I first moved to Boston, they uh, uh, I met people who would buy their own tanks. And then go fill them at this place yeah. that, uh, it, but it wasn't a nitrous like Dennis nitrous. It was nitrous for like whipped cream. Yeah. And then the dude would let, would fill all these the young kids tanks, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so funny. But, uh, yeah, anyways, I knew a guy who fished out, uh, he huffed it and then just like fell down and started smacking his face on the ground. Dude, I had a buddy. I had a buddy one time. We used to do the fucking keyboard duster. Oh, we yeah yeah. We so, used to now, hit those so now, so now, dude, do you remember? I was just talking to Chad about this. Remember that old episode of Intervention where the old girl was fucking addicted to the to the canisters of uh-uh. the duster, the air duster, and her car just the floorboards were filled with it. She had cold sores on her mouth because it would accidentally freeze her lip. Yeah. But uh, nowadays, so I bought some not for huffing. Just to like, I wanted to blow. Oh, yeah. I wanted to blow my drums off, and uh, now they have fuck. They put something in it that makes it taste bad. No, that was always there. Oh, was it? I don't yeah. remember it being so gross. Because now, because oh, now I've used it, and if I even smell it, I'm like, Ugh. and you can taste it in your mouth. Yeah. yeah, it's gross. Oh yeah. But yeah, when we would huff it, we would do it with our shirt. We'd put it your shirt over your mouth. Not me, dude. You just cold, just... Straight out of the straw. Woo! <laughs> Yikes. I used to do that shit in CVS, walking around. Yeah. One of the motherfuckers in CVS, dude, doing that shit. Yeah. I was a fucking... I was a man... I was a madman, dude. Yeah. yeah. God, what was the... What, and you said your your drink of choice was... Uh, Rumple. Rumple mints. Rumple. Yeah. How many level-headed people you ever heard say that? Not many. Yuck. I bet. It's like drinking mouthwash. Well, it was... And isn't that why people drink it? Yeah, so that's that, why most people drink it, because it smells like you just brushed your teeth. Yeah. But... <laughs> Someone figured out, hey, let's make some booze. That way we can drink more in public. Well, the, from where I'm from, it's called Merle's Inlet Mouthwash. And uh, it's pretty much like... that When you get off work, at a restaurant or bartending or whatever, when you get off work and it's 1 a.m. and you got one hour to get shit faced. Right. That's, yeah, that's you the... go to Rumple. If you got one hour to get to hit your quota as how drunk you want to be. Yeah, that'll be it. That's it. That's the move. Ugh. Um, well, is there a part, is there a part three to that or was it just a part one and two on that one? Uh, it's just part one and two so far. Look at this. Oh, part. okay. You should... <laughs> Look at what? Oh, Chad's outside. Uh, so we can, we'll uh actually you want you want uh you want to do one more? Sure. I wouldn't mind it. I've been really enjoying it. You're Hell fucking yeah. good. Thank you. Which I tell you that all the time, but goddamn, Thank that you. those are both, dude. Great lyrics. The fucking the the picking. Yeah. Goddamn. Thank That's you. fucking cool as shit, man. Here, Bill. Bill, you haven't been in the show yet. Come on. Bill, come here. You want to do your appearance? Come on. Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks. You fucking dummy. Come here. Nah, he doesn't want to be well, on I, today. What would you rather... I'll, I'll let you pick. What would okay. You, would you rather hear the song that I wrote on my birthday... When I was sad, sober uh, or not sober, sober, um, or would you rather hear the song that I wrote when I decided I wanted to move to Austin? Oh, let's hear that one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's a little shorter. Big 
figured I could wander Just might end up over yonder Till now I've been just fine with standing here For much I've tried explaining Not for nothing I've tried changing But I reckon I'm not much for shifting gears The loneliness I've been through Till there's nothing more I can do In the night I'm out here wasting all my breath For a life of ease I squandered Left to seek out what I pondered in a poor misguided head forsaking death Anything not here is a mystery And now I'm wondering who'd miss me if I loaded up my horse and headed west Cause these roots I've put down weaken And I'm picking up a beacon My rugged heart is beating through my chest well, the last thing I expected was to end up disconnected After all, this is the place where I was forged Strong as hell pulled from the surface Hotter than the fire that birthed us All the ones who know that pain is worth a reward might end up over yonder till now I've been just fine with standing here fuck yeah fuck yeah that's awesome man that's so cool you buy cause that's fucking good words those are fun that's cool as shit they, like you wrote a song yeah. And I got it. You got it. That's so sick. <laughs> Here, You're man. a talented motherfucker. You know that? Thank you. That was it's awesome. All about, it's all about lyrics. Yeah. Always. Yeah. It's which, all about lyrics. If it's, the lyrics aren't good, congratulations on your beat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right, that's it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Man. You know, that was almost... That's like... that. Remember when you explained to me that song, Hook? Yeah. That was that cool. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I had that. I was standing on the beach in Garden City, South Carolina. I used to go out there in the middle of the night, just go stand on the beach. And I had the thought, like, man, what if I didn't live here anymore? And it's uh-huh. like, man, I figured I could wander and I just might end up over yonder. Yeah. And Very I was just cool. like, that line was just like, holy shit, I need to write that down. Yeah, fuck yeah. That's awesome. Fuck, man, I could fucking, I could sit and just use you as a jukebox all fucking day, I swear. Yeah, well, I got a lot of practice at it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, dude, I can't thank you enough for fucking, for coming on and playing those songs, too. Everybody, please follow fucking Yonder on Instagram at Yonder Wizard. Yeah, Z-Z-E-R-D, everywhere. Fuck yeah, and also, go to Spotify and download his fucking albums. Those are... Yeah, got more gems like that. So fucking cool, dude. You, I, I just plugged your own shit for you, but it's just because I'm a big fan. I appreciate that. Was you. awesome, dude. Fucking thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me, put. And uh, also, please follow. Go to YouTube. Follow the channel, uh, the High Noon Podcast, please. And uh, rate, review, subscribe. Fucking my computer spazzing out right now. Let me fuck. Here we go. Hold on. Let me get you ready for that. Remember the outro? Oh yeah, you t- you were telling me. Yeah, here we go. Thank you guys for listening. Yonder, Nick Corey, thank you, buddy. Have a good night. Howdy, partner. Thanks for tuning in to High Noon with that Wiley Coyote, Mason Smith. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe on all platforms. We'll see you next week on the Dusty Trail for more high jinks and fun.
fucking that was what you were talking about with the commercials. That's fucking cool as shit. All right, thank you guys for listening.